tuned for today's episode of Breaking the Biz, an informative podcast where we dive into the world of entertainment by interviewing seasoned professionals who have made their mark in the industry. Gain invaluable insights as they share their personal journeys, offering advice on navigating the dynamic landscape of the entertainment industry. Whether you're an aspiring actor, musician, filmmaker, author, animator, or any creative soul, tune in for expert career guidance, insider tips, and firsthand accounts on breaking into the entertainment industry. Get ready to unlock the secrets behind successful careers and fuel your own passion for the limelight. Please remember to like this video and to subscribe to our channels for more great conversations. Greetings from Breaking the Biz, brought to you by Yes I Can Unity Through Music and Education. I'm William Felber, your navigator through the intriguing universe of the entertainment industry, as revealed by the visionaries and creators who bring it to life. Stay tuned as we delve into diverse insights from the forefront of entertainment, hearing from pioneers, creators, and agents of change. Prepare for a journey filled with tales of innovation, resilience, and the undying quest for artistic brilliance. Welcome to Breaking the Biz podcast with the SIKN crew. We have got a great guest with us all the way from Mexico. We have Guido Arcella, who is an audio director at Arcella Studios. Uh, he is a Berkeley College of Music alumni and award-winning film and game composer. Uh, his wins include two Intel Game Awards at the Game Developer Conference for his video game music works, first prizes for best film music, at the California Independent Film Festival in San Francisco and the Indie Gathering International Film Festival in Cleveland, as well as the Telly Award for Best Commercial Music. As a musician, producer, and arranger, arranger uh, Guido is part of an important projects to date. Uh, some studios where he worked and recorded were Abbey Road Studios in London, England. Pretty awesome. Windspear Opera House in Dallas, Texas. AKSS Studio in Valencia, Spain, Studio 22 in Budapest, Hungary, uh, Estuido 13, Mexico City. He currently directs Arcella Sound based in Mexico. Some of his clients include Nintendo, Kia, Pepsi, Paramount, and Coca-Cola. You got a pretty impressive uh, resume there. I'm pretty excited to have you. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. No, thank you so much for, for having me, really. Awesome. So I want to know, you've got like such a, a, a diverse background with music and sound design. When did you yourself fall in love with music? Yeah, so I'm um, so I, I came from from the from the orchestra world. So I, I originally came from playing violin. So I started playing violin at when I was like 12 years old. I think uh, it was kind of my my escape, right, to to everything what was happening in my teenage years, you know, like something to focus on, and all, all that stuff that you know we, we are like um, looking for what to do, right? So, uh, so, so I started playing violin in youth orchestras. I was back in Argentina, so I'm originally from Buenos Aires. And um, back back there, you know, I, I I had like you know I I got like all all about you know my my, my friends, you know my, my my orchestral friends. So from there, you know, like I, I was uh, trying to you know to to achieve a, a kind of a, a, a career in music, you know. I, then I turned like 15, 16 years old, and that's when I, I wanted to to achieve you know a music career. But the thing is, you know, my parents were not musicians, right? They were like kind of, uh, they had corporate jobs and it was kind of uh, weird or strange or almost risky for them to have a son, you know, on, on an artistic career, right? So I was, um, I, I was also like struggling to, you know, to convince them to, you know, to let me study music, right? It's not as, um, it's not easy, you know, to, to find you know a job or make a living they they, they, they said right so uh, something that really helped me was the faith that my mom put on me you know she 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 believed on me and then later my dad did uh, that as well and also uh, my violin teacher helped me a lot to to achieve a, a scholarship uh, to study in in Dallas so I went to uh, Southern Methodist University at SMU in in Dallas Texas I got a uh, 
a, a scholarship to study there, and that's where I met um, um, production music, you know, music production in a way that uh, it was totally unexpected. So I was studying at the music school there in, in, in SMU, and I had a big surprise that, you know, just in front of my music school, there was this awesome video game school called the SMU Guildhall. And in the SMU Guildhall back in the days, I think it still has that title. It's like the number one in game design for master's degree. So uh, they were hosting weekly this uh, pizza parties just to go and test their game. So I just went for the, for the food, right? <laughs> and to have some dinner. Um, free dinner <laughs> and uh, I, I started like playing these games starting to meet these uh, interesting uh, game design students you know that were like um, doing their games and they were like pretty pretty uh, solid games but uh, I, I, I found out and they, they were telling me you know that the audio was kind of a, a struggling problem you know and, and they, they, they didn't have like a time or even you know a person to to, to help with uh, in that department. So I started since freshman year um, collaborating with them. So I basically was, you know, like doing um, collaboration with, with this school for about all my four years while I was studying uh, violin performance and as well, I was double majoring in music composition, right? So um, all these four years, I, I did kind of a, a, a lot of, you know, uh, video game soundtracks. I did about 16. I, I kind of, my pace was three to four video games per semester. So these, these guys were doing a lot of uh, video game projects. So I started, you know, like um, learning, you know, production music because of music composition back in, in, in this school was kind of an academic approach, right? You were like almost writing from pen and paper, you know, uh, music scores. So with uh, video game and film production, you know, I, I, I bet you guys know, you know, like we're right now, you know, doing all in, in computers and MIDI and DAWs and all that stuff. So I started um, like kind of uh, self teaching me, you know, like got some, you know, uh, even books back in the, I, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to 2010, 2012, you know, YouTube was just starting to, 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 to get, you know, some useful content to, you know, to, to know what, what resources we can, we can have as, you know, not only, you know, digital music, but everything that, that we have today. Right. So I started using reason. I know if you guys know Propellerhead Reason, that's kind of a DAW that I think uh, rap musicians uh, use okay. often. And I did my orchestral mockups there <laughs> in a totally, you know, like not so friendly, user friendly uh, software to do precisely that. So, um, uh, what, what, what I really uh, achieved on these four years of, um, collaborating with, with in Dallas with in, in a student you know uh, environment was practice was uh, self teaching me a lot of stuff you know and then you know having uh, some tools and also you know at the end of the day a uh, kind of a very good portfolio to show a uh, Berkeley College of Music to to earn a scholarship to study uh, a master's related to film and video game uh, music uh, scoring so it was kind of a serendipity effect. So I, I never knew, you know, going to Dallas uh, uh, will encounter, you know, I, I will encounter a, a pretty awesome, you know, video game school and they will open the doors to, you know, to let me almost experiment and try to, 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 to score their, their games. Even those projects were very, you know, uh, diversified in genre, you know, they have like uh, different stories, different genres. So music had to be very, very uh, different from uh, between each, each project. So uh, each, each project wa was like very, um, uh, you, you have to approach it in, in different, in, in different ways. But at the end of the day, what I, I really uh, got uh, the, the best value out of it was communication, right? The collaboration and how to um, to communicate with people. That I think it was pre uh, it was key to you know to uh, 
after you know my master's degree and and and, and getting my my company going was you know the fundamentals of of my business right it's just understand the, the client and and try to to provide what the client uh, needs right so let me take two steps back you start off as a violin player yeah you go you're going to the club that's uh letting you test video games and the way they lure you in is offering you free pizza your idea is ha huh? free dinner and video yep. games sounds like a win-win situation when you were there and they mentioned that the sound design and the video game music wasn't really a strong program and they had a hole there uh, were you getting paid to create soundtracks when you were doing the sound design? Is that a paid thing for college or were you doing that just to learn? Yeah, first of all, there was a necessity, right? That I think it's very important to uh, to identify, right? In a in an environment uh, like that. And secondly, it was purely a collaboration, right? So I was like collaborating with them as a, as I was uh, a student, and they, they were like student projects. But I what I really valued was this uh, platform that you know both schools gave me. That it was you know going to the game developers conference, meeting other people, gaining student prices as well part of the intel game awards that we won was from this uh these projects that i did with with the smu guildhall right and from there i got to meet uh like i, I got to expand my network right so i think it was a a win-win situation in in a term of maybe it was not uh, as you know like seeking uh money but i was trying to expand my network because I knew that in the mid long term that will capitalize on, on, on contacts, right. And more projects. No. And I think that's a very good point. Um, and I want to highlight that is when you go to college, we just had a guest speaker last week who was talking about college was all about, um, you know, a learning the craft, but most importantly, finding other talented people that were as passionate and love the same things that you do. So obviously you're in a hub where people appreciate video games. You're in a hub where people appreciate the sound design and the music. Um, and then you're being able to tap into your skill set of composing music. Um, I also love how you mentioned your parents at first were a little skeptical uh, when anyone says they want to go into the arts. And uh, the, oh, the yeah. first thing that everyone always says is, well, how are you going to make money or you're going to be a starving artist? And uh, I love that your mom supported you. Dad came along a little bit after, but it always mm -hmm. takes one person to go. Like, if that's what you're passionate about, pursue your dream and let it go and 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 do it. So you're you're working and and man, you're you're knocking out music. Uh, you you were mentioning about three games a semester. Um, once you are done with that, um, did that open up a door? to i know you eventually go and start and create your own business um did the school teach you uh how to start a business or is that you know you mentioned in 11 12 youtube's just getting off the ground not so much educational <laughs> stuff but now the youtube that everyone on this call knows you can learn anything like you could talk about that program you were talking about and there's going to be a tutorial video or if you want to, I mean, you could learn how to play violin off of somebody putting in a, a video on YouTube, obviously not to the caliber of what you play, but where I'm going with it is information is accessible if you use the technology that's at your fingertips. So once you go through this college program, um, what comes next? Did the college help you find a job? Did you go into a job or did you just start your own company right after working and composing on these video games? Yeah, so uh, during those four years, you know, like the, the most important thing was um, uh, building trust, you know, on, on this, uh, on all the, my, my student mates that were like um, studying and, you know, like just graduating from college. And for me was, you know, um, after like almost, you know, go go getting into my last semester of in senior year right uh, i was uh, asking myself so i do i really want to be a violin player or should i pursue you know a a, a composer career right and and how 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 can i can i have you know a, a living out of it right so 
uh, later I, I I found out right that that there was a master especially on film scoring and you know game composing all those careers you know uh, I, I I wasn't so much aware of as as I know now that there's like now like a recent years being a game composer I think uh, it's uh, it's a sexy thing to to do <laughs> right now but back in the day it was nothing you know it, it was just you know uh, hidden you know from 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 the internet and all all, all this stuff right so um I identified two uh, universities, so I, I, I really wanted to go through a master's degree right after I graduated. Uh, I, I think I had like a very, I had a very good strength of uh, video game scores portfolios. So I wanted to use that to, you know, to get a, a scholarship to, to study a, a master's in film or game uh, composition, right? So uh, I, I had two kind of universities that I wanted to go. One was NYU Steinhardt and the other one was Berkeley College of Music, right, in Boston. So um, I applied to both. Both uh, accepted me, so it was pretty awesome. Something that I, I didn't mention that's, that uh, in my junior and senior year, you know, I started to get a little bit more comfortable and and um, better at composing for, uh, for um, visual media. In, in this case, the video game that I started, you know, like asking my orchestral friends to come to, you know, to record with me and doing this um, video game scores with kind of um, uh, orchestral, you know, recordings and kind of more uh, refinement, if, if, if you want to say, right? So I, I had like all this stuff kind of recorded and, you know, um, to, to you know, to, to build that portfolio and you know, all these behind of, the, of scenes and showing my work in, in, that, in that matter. So I, I really kind of had like a, a very good plus on, on the, my student portfolio. So uh, that's how, you know, I think NYU at Berkeley, uh, they were having an, an attention to me to, you know, to have, uh, to, to attend their, their master's program. So in, I think in Berkeley, uh, so I finally went to Berkeley because uh, I think that was this, their second year of their master's in film and game composition in Valencia, in Spain. So I didn't know when, when I was applying that I was going to go to Valencia, Spain. They have a campus there instead of uh, Boston. So I had to get my visa and then I went st straight to, to Valencia for an entire year. And uh, that school really, really um, got, you know, my, my feet in, inside kind of the industry in terms of, you know, all my, my the teachers, but also all the students uh, were active, you know, in the industry or after, you know, 10 years of graduating from the masters, they're already in, in the business and we network and we talk each other uh, every day, right? Um, but, um, on the other hand as well was the the courses you know like the first day was like okay so uh, you guys you're not going to um, study music but we're going to teach you how to use technology to make music you know so that was the skills that was you know like uh, they were um, I, I i was lacking you know to 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 continue with my career right so so i started you know using pro tools and you know how to to make a proper session and on and all that stuff to to make um a professional you know production music for films and for video games we had almost like a recording session with a small ensemble each two weeks you know so it was very uh, a practical uh, kind of um uh, degree, you know, and it was a 10 month program. So I, I really enjoyed it. It went very, very fast. Um, uh, well, after that, you know, <laughs> I, I, I kept going to, to, um, to conferences and festivals. That's very important to be consistent on, on meeting new people and going to, to these places that, uh, the, the, where, where, where the business is at, you know, and, uh, keep, you know, networking, keep catching up on, you know, the people you met at the previous editions from that same conferences and people start to, you know, recognize you. That's, that's and, and it was pretty 
it's it's pretty uh, nice to you know to have you know this kind of <laughs> network family in in each conference you know especially you know in the, the gdc that the game developers conference I, I i went there almost like i think five times already so i, I just went back uh, a month ago there and and i caught i caught up with um almost you know i can call them friends you know uh, developers other musicians and and many other um interesting people right i want to so, highlight that for, i want to highlight that hold it hold it right there i think it's important to put yourself in a position to network and be around people that are like-minded creative um you know you also mentioned uh you know their colleagues their their you know it's not necessarily competition but if you flock together so to speak right like you want to be around talented individuals a lot of times people talk about on in this call in this program that it's so hard to network but using the example um, you have to get yourself out of your comfort zone. You have to be around people. You have to go to those conferences. So if it's not sound design, like in your situation, if it's Comic-Con, if it's, you know, an animation, if it's drawing, if it's South by Southwest and it's music and media, you have to put yourself in that same room with people who are going to make moves. Because if you're in that room, uh, you're not going to be left out. You're going to be making moves with other people. So you go to conferences, you, um, you, you know, what, what comes next for you before you start your company? Yeah. So after that, uh, I, I got my master's and then I, I just went back uh, to Mexico where my family is living right now. And, uh, the most interesting thing it was, you know, so finally I just graduated and I was out of the bubble, right? So out of this, you know, amazing things that uh, uh, SMU and Berkeley gave me, you know, like this uh, experiences and all that stuff. So we're going to give you, you know, assignments and you're going to record with these awesome musicians, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, you're alone in your parents' house back again, you know, with your laptop and I think uh, an audio interface and, and your, your small MIDI keyboard, right? <laughs> and uh, then you know you you, you get you, you you realize that you know it's just up to you to build your career. You know, there's you know one way to put it is like go uh, go seek uh, a job. You know, in a video game company or you know uh, join some composer studio in LA or or whatever. Right? I, I, since I'm 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 a, I'm a composer. I'm a musician. So I, I didn't have so clear what I wanted to, to do. And also, you know, I, I didn't have so much money or my family didn't have so much money so they can, you know, invest on me and send me to California and, you know, get this um, maybe um, internships, right? Or having, you know, to serve coffee for composers, you know? So that many, many of my par partners or students, you know, uh, um, yeah, partners of my, my classmates, you know, uh, some of them did that and some of them, you know, uh, got a very good, you know, uh, position in, in, in the LA community. But for me, it was uh, completely different. So what I wanted to do was, okay, first, uh, I, I wanted to have you know, a semester of, you know, of rest of, you know, clearing my mind because it was very intense, all this, you know, four years of degree uh, of uh, my bachelor's degree, then jumped right into my master's, right? And um, from there, I started to um, learn um, a bit more of, you know, entrepreneurship uh, skills, right? So all of these books I that you see here are you know more of those like are those like business books you know entrepreneur entrepreneurial books that taught me you know how to talk with people how to uh, make a proposal how to build a website how to you know network how to catch up with people how to build systems you know as a business and uh, ultimately you know how to build a team you know that you know you can you can help and you know the, 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 um, um, the help could be mutual as well. You know, we have, um, I, I have 
composer friends, you know, also sound designer friends who, you know, uh, send me work. I send them work as well. And sometimes are part of my studio collective. You know, we, we do maybe a, a video game that requires three or four composers, right? Because it's a lot of music. And then all of a sudden, a three, four month in, in, a, in uh, after, uh, they, they, they call me and say, Hey, you know, Gila, you're, yeah, there's like a, like a, like a um, work we're we're doing and you know maybe we need some some music that that uh, you need to compose and maybe you know a uh, sound design i think all of you or most of you are sound designers it's kind of no different you know because i i find out that sometimes in uh, in our projects we need sound designers because we do uh maybe audio packages or especially in the in the video game world that you know uh developers or game designers they see us as audio guys or audio people you know what that means is they don't distinguish what music and sound design is <laughs> uh, uh on on the other hand film is i think more sectional or or it's more divided in departments but in video game they all see us as audio people so uh, as an audio right studio we're in charge of sometimes to do the music the sound even you know perform dialogues or, or of course you know uh, subcontract you know uh uh, actors or you know to to record lines of dialogue we even also work with audio programmers you know that there we have i have some friends that uh, they code so they will integrate all our audio files to game engines you know so all of this all of these scopes it's uh, audio work you know that maybe you know game designers expect from an audio studio and you learn that you know bit by bit and with combined with uh, business and entrepreneurship skills, you can achieve, you know, very big deals. We're not talking only about composing means of music. We're about selling all the audio service and then, you know, uh, delegating uh, these tasks, you know, to uh, your team, you know. Love it. Let me ask you this. Obviously, you're mentoring us tonight. Is there a mentor that comes to mind that you have? um oh that, yeah you know that you you could tap into and give a phone call if you want to ask a you know a little bit of advice maybe somebody who's helped guide your career to where it is today um when i say mentors who comes to mind and why okay so um first of all uh i have one one close friend and he was my teacher back in berkeley then he he left and he got back to berkeley but now he's uh, the director in berkeley abu dhabi so berkeley Ocean music is is in abu dhabi as well uh, his name is gail heading he's a very good friend and he's a very good mentor of, of mine since uh, yeah since 10 years ago more <laughs> more or less another uh, another um figure and and, and, and mentor is uh, eduardo weisman he's the head of audio in ubisoft toronto he's argentinian by the way <laughs> so i share a lot of you know cultural values and in in that matter so we we connect uh, very very nice and he's very kind to give me you know free advice kind of uh, each two or three months, you know? So I, I come in, you know, and I just tell him how, how I'm doing, you know? And it's pretty neat how uh, experience just talks, you know? Like he will say just awesome things and, and say most of the time, you know, you're in the right path, just give it time. I will do, you know, some some tricks here some tricks there just 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 keep going you know and that confidence or at least that feedback that uh, that's needed from a human being it just it's very very good because it keeps you motivated and going you know i love it so talk me through i see in your in on your website uh one of your clients being nintendo what was the first project you worked on for nintendo was it a, a certain game um and how amazing is it to get a phone call and be hired by Nintendo? Uh, yeah, well, he uh, with the Nintendo was uh, they published a, a game of what of, from uh, from a game that I worked right, and ironically, you know, uh, that game that I worked that was uh, from a video game studio that was funded by a student that I helped back in SMU Guildhall, right? So I I think I missed that. 
uh, saying that once I graduated, so did my my fellow, you know, classmates from the video game school. They started going to, you know, uh, they started working at 2K to in Blizzard, Activision. Um, some of them, in this case, they started funding their own companies for, uh, and started doing their own games, right? So uh, I, I kept uh, their contact and catching up with them once, uh, once a year at least, you know, to see how they are going. Even though you maybe you don't know what to say or <laughs> what to update them, you know, you just show up and, you know, say, hey, what's up, you know, like I'm just you know, coming back from Mexico, uh, how, how are you doing, you know, and you just don't know if they are, they're still studying or they're unemployed, or maybe just maybe they just founded an awesome video game studio and they just needed, you know, a, a musician to, to score their next game, you know, and so that was my, my, um, my, my situation in that matter, right? Okay, I love it. Uh, talk me through uh, how do you stay up to date on technology? It seems like every every week there's a new program, a, a new way to record. Um, is AI? You, is is it? Talk me through AI. How is AI involved in the creation of uh, sound design? I love it. Thank you for going there. Uh, no, well, it, it, this, we're living the rise of AI uh, basically this in this this months, right? Um, well, in my case, you know, I, I'm more and more I'm I'm into uh, into the business, working over the business, building systems, and uh, what I really used to speaking about technology, right? Yeah, it's important to catch up on. I think in in softwares. I mean, since sincerely for me, I I didn't update a thing for a year already. I think. But my, you know, my uh, my fellow composers or you know people that work in my studio, they are yeah, they are kind of you know very uh, geeks into it, you know. So they 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 get you know this free plugin because you know it's just like a, a uh, there's like a, a day that you know maybe on a universal audio just release a thing and it's completely free for two hours. They will know you know and they will just let us know that <laughs> that it's free and 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 and, and ready to download right and all this kind of stuff you know new releases about plugins etc cetera, etc cetera. for me it's um it's how can i uh, build systems more efficiently to gather clients for example so you know my studio has constant work in that sense you know so um on on that matter and with the help of ai chat gpt for example it it really fasten my maybe my uh, email like for example if i have to write an email or have to you know continue an email thread i will use chatgpt to help me just redact it and and get you know like uh, the big idea and then just tweak it and send it and uh, i i use a software called uh crm it's very known in business it's just nothing you know magical or, or nothing but uh the crm that stands for custom customer relationship management software it it helps me to uh, have control on you know catching up with uh, clients and prospects that maybe they will need audio in their projects sometime soon you know because we have to admit it you know there, there's you know times that some companies they just uh, are very busy you know or, or they're in in a phase of the project that they already have a team of audio or maybe they are uh, they're just starting out but you just have to follow up in for uh, for them to see when is the exact time to when they they, they will need uh, audio right so i'm in the constant search to uh, to get that call or you know or or to get that uh, gig in this case you know what I, I'm, I'm really working in is just uh, staying top of mind, you know, staying top of their uh, in their mind to, you know, when when the when the situation comes, when they will need some uh, an audio uh, sound designer or a music composer, they will think hopefully I, I, about me, you know. Let me ask you, how many people do you have working underneath you now at uh, Arsalio Studios? Yeah, it depends on the projects. Uh, we're about five to ten people right now. Okay, 
Uh, what pays the best video games, commercials? Uh, where do you, where do you find the most bang for the buck? Well, in my experience, it's video games. Totally. Is video yeah. games pay more because it's a very extensive and multi-layered and, uh, you know, it, it just has to have different themes, different composing versus a commercial, which is more of a jingle. Yeah, well, I think uh, it depends on your niche, I, I guess, you know, for me on my career, I just went my, you know, my destiny led to <laughs> two video games in, 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 in one sense or the other. But uh, for example, I, I, yeah, I, my niche, it's, I, I always like kind of work into into the video game world i started just doing maybe a loop maybe two music tracks that maybe they didn't pay too much or maybe i i was doing you know 10 sound effects with a loop and then all of the sudden you know you 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 really want to go for the big guys right the, the ones that they need like the entire audio package they need maybe an hour or 90 minutes of music with 300 sound effects and you know the an audio implementation service that you know uh, they, that we can work with the program the programmers from from their their studio so that's you know when the budget gets interesting and you you can get months even you know like uh, an entire uh, an entire year of work with just one project okay what uh, career advice would you give to someone who wants to get into sound design wants to be a, a you know a producer yeah um i think uh, <laughs> being in, in this point of uh, of managing a, a studio right it's uh, li like i said you know being top of mind expanding your network and when you when you when you mentioned uh, bread about uh, which mentors I have, I really have you, I really have, you know, a network map, you know, that it's like a mind map, you know, where I, you, you should put all your names, all, all people's names that maybe, you know, you know, in life, I'm not talking only about, you know, your college mates and people who, who, who you, you meet in conferences or co Congress, but also um, maybe a uh, family or, you know, uh, people who, who might know someone who works in, in the film or in the video game or in the inter entertainment business. You'll be amazed that, you know, maybe a friend of a friend works or is a director of uh, a next important film, you know, or, or something like that. It's, it's crazy what, what, what you can find out in your, uh, in your search for, you know, for leads, you know. Okay. And once you have once you have your mind map, you know, you just follow up with all these people, you know, I, I don't know, like once a year, once a semester, you catch up and, and just be top of mind to get work. And also we mentioned competition, uh, right, Brett, in mm -hmm. maybe, you know, there's another sound designer that, you know, uh, it might, you know, be a, 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 a threat or something, you know, but it's nothing to, 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 to we, we don't see it like that. You know, we, we have to see it as, okay, so how can I, um, how can I, uh, be a team with, with this person or maybe, uh, with this music composer, you have to be friends also with music composer guys, because composers sometimes, or m most of the times they ask, they, they will get asked by to do, you know, a package maybe of, you know, music and sound. And these composers might need that sound designer that complement their, uh, their services. So be, be very, uh, attentive on, you know, on, uh, on your network of who, who you meet and how can you sustain that kind of relationships, you know, and once again, you know, be top of mind with all these people. So in their next opportunity, they will call you. Can you share a time where you had to step out of your comfort zone? Obviously, you know how to compose music, video games. Uh, you know, if it if it needs a violin, you can jump in there and you can knock it out. Is there ever a time that you did a project that you were like, eh, doesn't really fit under my wheelhouse, but I'm still going to take on the project and it was successful? Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, sometimes you just... You just uh, do it for the bucks, you know, like <laughs> just to maintain yourself uh, afloat. Um, and uh, sometimes you just 
Yeah, I mean, there's like also, I, I want to say it ugly, but you know, sometimes it's best to say no, or or maybe it's just not, not so, uh, how do you say this, like, it, it doesn't pay uh, so much to, you know, to, to be, uh, to be worth it, even, you know, uh, because at the end of the day, it's, it's the hours of the amount of work you do to, to get something, uh, of value or interesting at the end of the day, you know, but, um, yeah, so, so I, I will have like, uh, like different projects. So maybe I will do like a video game score, but there's like, uh, like one, one time, you know, that there's like a, this Berkeley friend that was doing an album and they, he, he needed like a string quartet. And I was, I just pulled a string quartet out of my hand. <laughs> like I, uh, in, in my city, you know, I, I, I know orchestral people. So I just gathered and, uh, uh, a string quartet and put it in, in my production studio. So this is not even like a recording studio facility. It's like a production studio, but it's big enough just to put a, a string quartet and I will put them here and record them with uh, two stereo mics and, and it will sound very good, you know? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Give me a mantra that you live by. Like a mantra, a, a mantra or something that you say, you know, um, I always joke it's another day in paradise or, you know, just uh, trying to remain, you know, you, you know, loving your life and keeping it positive. Is there a mantra that you say that uh, just keeps you focused? Something that a saying that you say to yourself? Yeah, I think um, I, I, I don't know, like exact words, but I, I always, you know, each day I I value more and more my time, you know, so it's very important how to manage your time. And if you if you will, if you will get occupied by doing uh, work, just make sure you know that your time gets the, the most, you know, profit or the most uh, uh, va valuable outcome, you know. Okay, perfect. Uh, my last question to you is, um, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give to your younger self with all that you have learned? And that can be from, you know, what you've learned in the college. Uh, it could be from what you've learned running your own business. Um, just a, uh, what, what's that piece of advice you would give to your younger self with all that you've learned now? <laughs> Um, I, well, I think uh, be be a um, constant active listener. You know, sometimes you know we we have in conversation and we lose so much information about you know opportunities and and further you know collaborations and be and be very nice to people. I think it's a very cliche thing to say. Also, smile. You know, that I think just a smile opens up a lot of doors. And be very attentive. You know, because every time that you have a conversation with with a client or with a prospect, that's most important. You know, everything that they say and the tone of it, it's a piece of information that helps you to uh, land your next job or to help them out on uh, on or, or providing value to them. Because all not not all all the time you know you will get that job but if you provide value and help them maybe you know uh, having you know uh, uh, connecting with other people that you might know and might help this prospect or client they they will uh, thank you and they will remember you for for a long time you know it's uh I was just having this conversation with someone today and they they were just talking 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 and I said just take 2 seconds and listen. Listening is just as vital as doing all the talking. 90% of communication is is listening. And um, I loved how you said that. You have to be attentive of your clients. You have to be attentive of what they need. They're paying you for a service. They want a certain outcome. And the only way you are going to be able to compose and give them what they want is by listening and and crafting exactly what it is they want so i'm so glad you pointed that out and that's it's so important um we're always busy and hustling but just taking the time to listen uh more is uh is so important uh is there any well, I, I lied on the last question is there any dream project that you want to work on is there a band you want to record is there a, a movie, a director that you want to work with, a video game that you're like, ah, if I could just... Oh, man. 
We're just, we, we just finished a great, great video game that I hope uh, I, I can share it soon. And I think that was one of my you know, achievements. There, there, it's, there, there's the point of the time that you just go and then you have to realize what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I think we, in my studio, we did like just a great uh, video game score that I hope I can share to you guys soon. And I think that's worth of uh, celebrating, you know. So awesome. It's, it's one that you can just tell that we all want to play and it is just going to be a big one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think it's it's it, it's gonna be huge. Yeah, for me it was totally the opposite. You know, like I started doing you know composing string quartet music, and then all of a sudden they will have you know uh, asking me you know uh, do some guitar electric guitar shreds or something you know and I will be and I I, I don't play you know <laughs> guitar and all that stuff, but uh, I think it all goes down to um to uh, to to just you know um experience you know and, and produce all this kind of other music or to nowadays you know you have all this technology you know i i i, I have in my mind you know um, this plugin called uh, Spitfire Labs, you know, or Spitfire, uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra, all these plans are uh, sample it. libraries are completely free, you know, and they have like a great quality to 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 just download it in just 10 minutes and start composing stuff with uh, with these orchestra samples, you know, and just try try the things if you know music theory that's awesome because that that allows you to you know to voice uh, properly or your instruments you know and then all of a sudden you you see that it's not so different you know composing you know something in guitar and bass and something on the on the other hand violins with cellos for example right because we're talking about treble instruments with bass instruments and just making it balance all together and and yeah, that's kind of a, an intro, <laughs> but something that really helped me uh, when when I was composing uh, as a student in, at the SMU Guildhall was precisely that, you know, all the projects were just so different, you know, that each different project was a challenge to me and um, uh, it allowed me to experiment and to get totally outside my comfort zone, you know, downloading this program that was recent, you know, that I didn't have any idea how to use it. I didn't know what was MIDI. So I started, you know, uh, getting, you know, programming all this uh, stuff in the software. I just, you know, uh, attempted, you know, many, many, um, yeah, many uh, also type, types of music and yeah, and that's it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just go for it getting out of the comfort zone yeah love it <laughs> totally great question christian are there any other uh questions i want to just again thank you for your time uh i think it is awesome that just uh going to get a, a few f uh free pieces of uh of pizza led you down to finding a career path and something that you're absolutely passionate about guido um I want to wish you continued success and uh, I love that you're working with some of our students in here and hopefully we get you some more as well. Uh, continued health, continued success. And thank you again for your time tonight. Thank you so much guys for having me. It was a pleasure and um, I hope I can, I can be here once again and maybe some spe other specific uh, topics I will, I will love to also share and, and talk about. Perfect. I love it. On that note, everyone, uh, see you guys at Mendocito Farms. If you can, come break some bread and come have some dinner. I'll be there from 630 on. Looking forward to seeing your faces. On that note, everyone have a good rest of your evening. Thank you again, right. Guido. As we conclude another enriching episode, we hope you found inspiration in the stories shared today. Let's take a moment to honor Yes I Can's role in bringing Breaking the Biz to life. Yes, I Can's commitment to empowering young people with disabilities through education, advocacy, and mentorship shines brightly, paving paths of opportunity and dialogue. This podcast celebrates the organization's dedication to nurturing talent and facilitating impactful discussions. 
Breaking the Biz is more than a podcast. It's a part of Yes I Can's broader mission to amplify voices, dismantle barriers, and craft a world that's more inclusive and accessible for everyone. Each episode is a chapter in our shared narrative of progress, education, and empowerment, driven by the spirit of Yes I Can. Thank you for spending your time with us on Breaking the Biz. Continue to challenge the status quo and share stories that resonate. Until our paths cross again, let's keep transforming aspirations into achievements and infuse every endeavor with optimism. Here's to advancing the landscape of the entertainment industry one episode at a time. I'm your host, William Felber. See you next time.